Hi, I'm Peter Kamstrom from Kamstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you a well, a few tools and a few tips and tricks on how to use Excel 2010. And specifically, I'm going to do a little analysis that you might find useful for selecting where to go on your holiday trips. So I'm going to start by adding a few parameters here, such as um, how many, how many people are going on the trip. And in my case, I would like to bring the entire family. So that would be five people. And uh, I would also uh, have another parameter. How many days are we going on this trip? So let's say we would like to take a lot of time off. So we'll go in 10 days. And then we have some um, day by day costs. And then we have, and that would be a heading. So I'm just going to do a bold on that. And then I will have some fixed costs or one time costs is actually better. There we go. And then I'm going to uh, use a function to name these cells because I'm going to be using these in formulas later. So I want to have, I want to refer to these cells by names. So I'm going to select those, go into the formulas tab of Excel 2010 here, and I'm going to create from selection. So that creates names from the values in the left column, which I'm going to do here. That's fine. So there we have how many and days. Those are the cells and I will be able to use those now. Then I have a few alternatives here of where I want to go. Thailand, for example, I would like to go to New York. And then I would like to go to Söder Shopping, which is very close to where I live in North Shopping, Sweden. And uh, of course, these two have different costs. And let's go to somewhere well, day by day cost. We need need to eat some food, of course. That's one important thing when traveling. We also need to have somewhere to stay. If we're going to be away from, from 10 days. We do need to sleep from time to time. So lodging or a hotel or something. And then we probably want to do some activities. And well, maybe a car or something. So the one-time cost would be the transport back and forth. So let's have the flight or transport to the actual vacation location. And then it would be maybe visas and preparation costs. Okay, just a few examples there. So, and then we just fill these things with um, values. And let's say that the food in Thailand cost um, $20 a day. And that will, of course, then be a dollar value. So I'm going to put that in. There we go. And I don't want any decimals. So and the lodging would be maybe $30. OK. And I'm going to do the same. This is all going to be dollars. And um, so I'm just using the same format everywhere. The activities. I'm mostly going to be lying on the beach, so that's going to be maybe $20. And then a car. I don't actually need a car in that, so that's in Thailand, so I'll have zero there. Being in New York, that's probably going to be more expensive on the food. Lodging is going to be more expensive too. The activities, that's going to be expensive too, um, but I don't need a car there either. In Soda Shopping, though, I do need a car, so that's going to be $100 per day. The activities, not much to do in the shopping actually. Well, okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, 50. And the lodging is going to be like 150 most likely. And the food is going to be rather expensive there too. So let's do that, 150 for the food too. All right, so the transports to get to Thailand would probably be around uh, $1,500. All right, then we need to put these in there also for my painter. Um, all these, all right. So no visas and uh, probably preparation would cost two hundred dollars, all right. New York, that would be cheaper, maybe thousand to get there from Nara Shopping Sweden again. No visa, no visa in the other shopping actually either. And the preparations for going to the U.S. probably a hundred. So the shopping, no transport, and uh, no visa again, and no transport. 
All right. Now, all right, we have a, a lot of uh, data here. So let's actually do some calculations. And um, then we can do a sum here. One of the beautiful things of um, Office 2010 is this thing, uh, or Excel 2010, of course, is the format as table. So I'm going to select this and format this as a table. And then I can actually go in, and without doing any formals, uh, formulas at all, I can just uh, add a total row. And I'll select the total, total row here and do the sum on each of those. Beautiful. And then I'm going to do a day by day. Beautiful. So we see in Thailand we can spend seventy dollars a day, in New York two hundred and fifty, and in Seoul shopping four hundred and fifty. All right. The one-time cost we'll do the same thing. Make that into a table too, and we're actually going to copy that heading there. There we go. And make that into a table also. I just hit Control C, Control V, by the way. There. I'm going to format this as a table also. Beautiful. There we go. And then I'll just add on the table tools here the total row again. And that would be zero. And again, a sum and a sum. All right, beautiful. So now I would do the total trip cost. And that would, of course, be the day by day total. There we go. I'm just uh, using the keyboard to select that. I can use the Keyboard, uh, the mouse also, of course, multiplied by how many? Multiplied by how many days? Because these day by day totals are per person, of course. All right. So, and of course, I do want that in dollar format also. So there, there we go. That's actually the total cost for the day by days. So then, of course, we need to add this sum multiplied by the number of uh, persons. Right, so that's the fixed cost, the one-time costs multiplied by the number of uh, persons. We don't need to multiply that by number of days because that's those are one-time costs. Right, so twelve thousand dollars to do that trip, and then we just fill those out over there. So we will see we have a very good motivation not to go to Soda Shopping, which is mean. Soda Shopping is a really nice town, but um, anyhow, this does uh, show off some of the respective features in Excel 2010. And it might also actually be useful. All right, let's go one further step here, because if you want to hand this off into people's hands, you don't want them to actually change uh, anything wrong. You don't want them to change these uh, formulas and everything. So if you uh, enable the spreadsheet um, protection, which is actually out of um, the image here, so I'll move this up a bit so it comes into the image. If you do this here, protect the sheet, there we go. Now, then everything is going to be locked, so I can't really change anything. So if I decide that lodging in Thailand is going to be more expensive, that doesn't work. So what I then need to do is actually unlock the cells that uh, I do want to have uh, unprotected. So I'll unprotect the entire sheet, and then I will select the cells that I want to change and uh, what I'll go ahead and do is go into this little thing here format cells and the last tab actually has protection on it and I'll remove the locked position on those and all these are changeable too so I'll do the same thing there there we go and these ones can also be changed right and protection locked. There we go. And I can actually go ahead and do some layout change of uh, cell styles. I can do these to good, or these to good. There we go. Good. Again, good. That shows the user of this that watch uh, values are actually changeable. Excellent. Now, when I protect the sheet, I can bring that into view, protect sheet. Then I will actually be able to change. So if I only bring three people, see all the data changes. Uh, but if I go out here, and I will get the protection thing. So that's my demo. Thank you for watching.